I get a lot of questions asking me how I put the banana jack on the end of my test light. So I made a short doing it, but I'm gonna show you now how to, how to make your own test leads for a multimeter. Something like this. See, I made these for my bench multimeter. Um, they have stackable bananas at the end, so I could add like a test light in. And then the front of it just looks like, you know, a regular multimeter end, and you could put in a, I use, I'm using this usually for circuit boards, so I put back probes so that I could, you know, touch really small things. So, but they're very simple to make and relatively inexpensive. And they're pretty high quality, I don't know, it's like silicone leads, which 14 gauge, I don't know, they just feel right. So pretty much the wire I use is this 14 gauge silicone wire. Um, I don't know who makes it. It's on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But just cut it to length, however long you want it. So put them over here. This looks long enough for me. Just gonna snip both of them. I will do one at a time. Okay. I'm just gonna strip back some. And over here I got banana connectors. That's where we use the red and black because you know that's the most basic multimeter color. Now if you're using them for a scope, you could do whatever color you have to whatever channel scope. Black and red. And we'll use these guys. Okay. I'm actually going to strip back a drop more. Close to through there. And don't forget to put your thing on. It's like flaring. You always forget at least once. Alright. This is... This is the, I don't know the real way to do this. This is the way I do it. It works for me. I stick it through the hull. I stick it through the hull. Then I bend it onto the flat side. Now, I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but this has always worked for me. Put it on the flat side. Now, the trick is, use flux. When you're soldering, flux is your friend. So, I'm gonna put some flux on here. Okay, now, when you're using flux, make sure you turn on a fume extractor. It also makes a lot of smoke. So I have a fume extractor right here, from the bottom of my desk. It's gonna make some noise, so I don't know if you'll be able to hear. But, I'll try to talk over it. Okay. Then we got solder. Wait for it to get the temperature. All that's the flux burning off. I try to get it into the hole. Then the way to drop, and I'm going to flip it. It's very hot, so just be careful. Flip it over. Put more flux on the other side. Alright, and just let it cool down. I'm going to turn off the extractor so you can hear me again. Alright, but now... Yep, this is not moving. This is nice and strong. Might want to wait a drop. Then you just push this down, put that through the hole over there. Ouch, I burnt myself. 
take the bottom cap on all right sometimes you gotta trim this is this guy There we go. Now we have one end. Now for the other end, it works a little bit different. Use one of these, just straight. Okay. We're gonna stick this through over here. Um. Strip off a little bit. Then over here, you just slip it through the slot until you're touching the end. We'll just put that there to hold it. Got to turn back on the fume extractor. Put some flux. Mount this over here. The flux draws it into the wire. I let it dry. Once it cools down, it will dry tight. Now it's tight. Just push this back up. It has little ridges over there that catch in the end of this. So we're going to push it in until it stops and then just use the edge of the table or something. Until you'll feel it like click in place. So that's it. Now you have a high quality lead. You could, you know, um, connect whatever you want to it. You could put a uh, you could put a back probe on one side, you could put an alligator clip on the other, and you know, they're pretty universal and they last. As long as you don't, when you're making a solder joint, just make sure you're using flux and it's going into the, it's wicking into the wire and it's not just on top of it like cold. Also, another tip when you're using a soldering iron, don't use like the tiny tips that are good for like micro soldering like this one. But I use a bigger tip. I like bent for almost everything and it just, it absorbs because the thing is going to absorb a lot of heat so this will you know have sufficient heat to melt the solder and you can do it for a lot of things you could i, I use them on regular test lights i take light bulbs from the junkyard you know the the housings and just put on these ends right here and now if i test it you see i could just well i don't have a wire for it but i'm just going to plug these banana clips in the back there we go i have i have 1.27 amps of current going through this with 12.7 volts so you know it's very good for testing a circuit that uses a little over an amp but you know you could hook this in a circuit you know take one wire and hook it in to one side like let's say through a power and a ground and then you know the power and the ground's good i put them on my regular test lights also i cut off the end of those otc test lights and they also work but yeah it's you know a little different type of video but i got a lot of comments asking me about this so i figured i'll just make a video all right thanks for watching